Hi, I'm Ellen Petrie Lienz. Thanks for joining me to explore the importance of human intelligence, your human intelligence, as an essential complement to the AI we're tuned into today. To do that, let's take a look at Einstein's brain. Did you know that his brain went missing shortly after his death? It's true. It disappeared in April 1955 when a pathologist, secretly and with no permission, removed it during Einstein's autopsy. Can you believe it? Stealing Einstein's brain? Only when Einstein's son peered in on his dad for a final goodbye did he realize that something was missing. But meanwhile, back at the lab, that pathologist photographed every imaginable angle of our age's most celebrated brain before cutting it into pieces and preserving it in formalin. Now those photographs are incredible and they reveal that anatomically as well as functionally, Einstein possessed a most unusual brain. First, relative to normal brains, and there really is no normal brain. Brains are even more different than fingerprints. Einstein's though was notably asymmetrical. Next, it had unique wrinkle patterns. Its gyri and fissures, those shapes in the gray matter, suggest something unusual, maybe in the way information traveled over the surface of the brain. Now, that pathologist was no neuroscientist, who really was in 1955, but he knew enough about brains to note something strange in the interior of Einstein's. He noticed an unusually dense corpus callosum, especially relative to other 76-year-olds, Einstein's age when he died. Now, density in the corpus callosum suggests high levels of usage of activity, and that is significant information. Think of the corpus callosum as the transit center between the brain's hemispheres. It passes information from one side to the other, so the brain works, ideally, as a unified whole. Now, we knew so much less about the brain not to mention the corpus callosum in 1955 than we do now, or even than we did only a few years later. That's when pioneering neuroscientist Michael Gazzaniga started severing the corpora callosa of epileptic patients as a way of curtailing their seizures. This split brain research became Gazzaniga's life work, and it gave us our first science-backed glimpse into the very different behaviors of the hemispheres, and how the corpus callosum affected that. Now the hemispheres get a weird rap. You've probably heard that the left hemisphere is where we process math and logic and data, whereas the right is where we get all creative and artsy. That's a misleading oversimplification. Yes, that left hemisphere drives literal and linear thinking matching words to concepts, delivering answers, calling on data to draw conclusions. But that's different than solving math. It's about coming to conclusions, linear, unquestioning conclusions. Now the right hemisphere works differently. It is the challenger, the side of the brain that scans possibilities, factors for intention, and presents alternate outcomes. If the left hemi is linear, the right is contextual and imaginative. It invites complexity, zooms out to see the big picture, it visualizes and it taps the limbic system to see what the emotions say. As the left hemisphere gets busy solving problems, the right imagines possibilities that can help the left solve the problem right. It challenges assumptions and offers, on the other hand, where the left hemisphere, on the other hand, does not. Left to itself, pardon the pun, the left hemisphere would take the shortest, most direct route to a conclusion. It would use what it knew to be true without questioning if it actually knew. It would find an answer and deliver it quickly, often overriding options from the right half. Now the right brain would generate a wide array of possibilities and offer them to the left for consideration. If you've read Daniel Kahneman's Thinking Fast and Slow, you're familiar with this. Even if you haven't read it, you've probably been certain you were right about something, only to think back later and ask, why didn't I listen to those other thoughts? We can almost feel when we shut them down. Maybe you see where I'm going here, since this is a talk about integrating AI and human intelligence.
together. The hemispheres are capable of much more than either is alone. On its own, the left would run its familiar routines with no creative spark or relational context, locked to facts and assumptions. The right would generate a lot of potential, yet not solve problems efficiently. Now see for yourself, I'm going to ask two questions. The first is one you've been able to answer since you were in grade school. Ready? What's 10 times 10? Perfect question for the left hemisphere. You didn't even have to think. Your left hemisphere took you straight from question to conclusion. And now, a different question, one that will need your right hemisphere. How would you teach this child to understand 10 times 10? That's a very different road your brain traveled. As I said, you can almost feel it. Now I bring this up because you, yes you, are shaping the future of what we call intelligence and how it will inform all that's ahead. And AI, at least at its current stage, models on that left hemisphere, that answer-seeking processing that is immensely powerful, yet is a subset of our full intelligence. AI is not at the stage, and who knows when, if, or how it will ever be, where it can spark a child's aha about a foundational concept. You can do that using your imagination, your empathy, and your intuition, the unique domain of the right hemisphere. Maybe an AI will do that one day, maybe not. But in any case, for now, your human intelligence is as essential to success innovation, and genius, as is any AI. And Einstein's brain may tell us why. You can clearly see his corpus callosum here. Compared to an average callosum at any age, it is thick and dense, truly a superhighway for bridging those divides. Maybe Einstein was born with an anatomically superior corpus callosum. That alone could explain his genius. Yet, I have a hunch there's more. The brain adapts itself to use. Between his colossal colossum and those odd wrinkles we saw, I wonder if Einstein's brain generated even more ways to make the hemispheres work as a team. Interestingly, a recent study of that preserved brain tissue revealed an extremely high concentration of a very special sort of cell, the type that transmits and networks information across the entire brain. Did these cells drive more hemispheric integration than the corpus callosum alone could achieve, effectively super unifying Einstein's brain so it works seamlessly and powerfully in ways that change the world? Might Einstein's lifetime habit of blending imagination and logic have guided his brain to summon, if you will, the best of both worlds? There's no way to know. Yet it gets me thinking about you and about her. Her world will be built on a variety of intelligences, some as old as time and some yet to be invented. And as we continue to integrate AI into that world, I propose we learn from Einstein's brain, driving yet adaptive, conclusive yet imaginative, linear and contextual, able to harness the highest intelligences from both hemispheres and integrate them into genius. I believe Einstein intentionally cultivated the balance between his hemispheres, and that shaped his genius. Now, he wouldn't have called it that, yet he often spoke about imagination and intuition, two vivid right brain attributes, as the catalyst to his world-changing breakthroughs. Read for yourself. Traveling on a light beam, visualizing that. The intuition, the glorious master, the rational mind, a faithful servant. As you ask what AI can bring to the world with all of its power to process data and generate breakthrough conclusions, I invite you to flip the question. What will you bring to the world of AI? And how will your human intelligence master its potential? The AI is your faithful servant. Celebrate and activate the full spectrum of intelligence fueled by your own. 
our era's most celebrated brain would wish for nothing less. Thank you and have an excellent day.